All right, everybody, come on in, please. Come on in, please. All right. Welcome to P304. Uh, in, in, intro. Introduction. new partner last year exactly one year ago I met Anne and Anne said how do you pronounce your name <laughs> and then she said it's your birthday and then she said the most wonderful thing oh, okay. she said everybody needs to play with Angela and everybody needs to let her win today So as my friend, just FYI, anything else you want to announce? I want to announce that I love Brett. <laughs> That's all. Right. Well, we all know that Angela is allowed to win every game every day. So today we just say happy birthday when we do it, and we and and we let her wear a tiara, and we let her let her wear her tiara, which she brought on her own. All right. Uh, Aisha, did you have any announcements? Yeah, so um, I got a text about five this morning from Glenn and Sue, and they both woke up feeling really sick, so they decided not to attend because they didn't know what it was. So we're going to do what we did last uh, Thursday. We're going to do the drill in the middle court with Brent. And also, this is Jerry, my husband. He's working on the music video for us. So he's trying to get B real. so like, the ball hitting the rocket, the fun shots and stuff like that. So that's, he, he's going to be there doing that stuff. That's it. Oh, and we have um, Sharon and Mitch are away. So we have Margaret and Judy subbing for us today. Thank you, ladies. All right, introduction to doubles tactics. We are working on, uh, in this class particularly, we work on the weak side attack, which is attacking when you're playing two right-handed players, the backhand side of the player on the backhand court. That's where you're generally going to start your attacks from. So you're going to be attacked that way, and you're going to be learning to attack that way. So you're going to get experience on both sides, offense and defense. Um, I see a ton of improvement over the last about two months now that we've been doing this, month and a half we've been doing this. Um, it's very encouraging to me as a coach to see this. Um, now, you're left-handed. No, you're left-handed. Do we have? I thought you were for a second. Any other left-handers here? Okay. When you're playing, when you're playing these two, remember that there's going to be a there, there, one's left-handed, one's right-handed. So the weak side is going to be in the center of the court when their paddles are on the outside, and the two outsides when their paddles are on the inside. Right. So the the weak spot that you're attacking is a little bit different when one of the players or both of the players is left-handed. Just got to keep that in mind. But for everybody else, it's going to be that front forehand side. Now, to go with that, I was talking last week about, or earlier this week, I guess, about um, how the court is divided into thirds. Can I just get two players on that side, uh, Ann and Rod? And then I'll move, put Angela and Angela and uh, Ann here. Sorry. I'm used to saying Angela and Susan. So, All right. So when the ball's in the middle of the court, the center line is the middle of the court, right? It's the, the center line. When the ball shifts over to this side of the court, we have a new center line, which is here, right? Because we're dividing the court into thirds. So if they want to escape being attacked on this side, they're going to hit the ball over to this side of the court, which means everything shifts over to here, and the new center line becomes here, right? If they defend this as the new center line, um, the ball's not getting between them. It forces this team to take the ball back over to the other side. They have lots of time to get back over there. So there, you got to remember the concept of the dynamic center of the court. When the ball's in the center of the court, the center line is our center. And then each of the players is covering half the court. When the ball slides over here, we shrink the court to two-thirds. That way there's less court to cover 
and we're forcing our opponents to hit the ball a longer distance and toward a sideline, which means it's more likely to go out. So we'll be working on that in the center court today. We'll be working on court movement when it's your turn to, to be with me. Uh, but I'd like you to try and keep that in mind and maybe try to incorporate it in your game uh, even before you are working with me today. Any questions about this? All right, we're going to continue our warm-up. Uh, at 20 after, we're going to change without a water break, without a break. We're just going to rotate courts, uh, and we will start game one. So you have from now until 20 after to warm up and play your warm-up game. Okay? All right, you two can keep warming up here. I got to get set up and then I'll come over and work with you guys. Go ahead, warm up. Well, actually, once you go to that side, we'll all warm up together. We'll just warm up. Nothing fancy yet. Oops. 
All right. So we're going to do a movement drill. We're going to just dink, and we're going to move side to side. So you guys are going to move side to side as a team, yep. and I'm going to move. So you're going to return the ball to my half of the court, okay. uh, or somewhere near me anyway. Um, and you guys are going to move. We're going to work our way across to this sideline, and then we're going to work our way back to that sideline. Okay. okay, ball behind you. Go. All right. So we're going to start with Aisha on this sideline. You on, there we are. Good stuff. Got to move together, Rod. Got to move together. One of the things you got to remember is, if you guys are moving across this way, say, and I hit the ball, say, somewhere in between you, if you step into it this way, you cannot hit it out this way because you're hitting it back out towards your open side. So you have to keep that in mind. If you're going to step in, then you can't think to the side of me. You have to think to the side of me. Same with the other direction. You always want to think about where is the open space behind me, and you never want to put the ball outside of yourself out between where there's nothing between the person you're hitting it to and the open space so always keep it in we call it in the funnel keep it in the funnel so think about that as we're doing this now okay Oops. okay okay we'll get there Good. Yes. See, the, ten the tendency is to hit that into where there's open space, right? Move together, move together. Good. Okay. Keep in mind, we always think about movement as being side to side. The movement has a back and forth dimension as well, right? So if your partner starts getting pushed back, you have to go back with them, right? Now, there's an element there where you have to pay attention to what's going on. Sometimes you're going to want to move forward if you have an attacking opportunity. But generally speaking, if your partner's getting pushed back, you need to back up with them. If they're moving forward, you need to move forward with them. So I'm going to try and give you guys some stuff that's not going to just move you side to side, but also push you back and forth. Okay? 
Okay, so last concept I want to introduce you to is um, the really short drop. So often a ball will hit the net card and just roll over, and this player will have to step forward to get it, right? Um, when that happens, this player who's receiving it will often hit a log, right? So you have to be aware of when you hit one of those, one of those um, balls, that one player needs to be ready to move forward and the other needs to be ready to move back. You do not want to be caught with your feet side by side. Yeah. And when the ball's that close to the net, right, they're not going to be able to drive it at you, so you don't need a wide stance. You need a mobile stance. You need one player, need, they both need to be ready to move in both directions. But one player may have to go back, one player may have to go forward. So you want to. As soon as that ball ticks the net, I want to see you move your feet from this to this, right? So I'm going to try and tick the net a couple times. You see what happened there? It ticked the net. Uh, Now I can't hit the net. Oh, there we go. Is it time? Okay. Yeah, good. Good work, you guys. We'll work some more later. So. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Rotate around me. So you guys are going to rotate over there. Yeah. You guys are going to ro rotate there. You guys are moving today. You're going to rotate that way. You guys are going to move here. Yeah. Yeah. You are moving today because I'm the anchor today. Where'd they go? There are no breaks. No breaks today. You get what you need? Oh, I'm still cheating. Okay. So we're going to work on movement. I'm going to go through uh, four movement concepts, hopefully, in the time that we have. We're just going to start with just simple movement. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to pass the ball and we're going to work side to side. Just hit the ball back in my general direction. If I'm over here, there's no point in me hitting it over here. Just put it somewhere where I can get it. I, don't worry about it, I'll move. But I want you guys to move together 
right? Side to side, okay? That's what we're going to start with. Yeah. No, it, it's going to stay in the kitchen, yeah? And we're going to just dink, and we're going to move side by side. So, yeah, use those as your markers. So when the ball's out here, that's your center line, right? When it's in the center, that's your center line. And remember that if the ball's here, you're going to adjust your center line accordingly, right? It's not one, two, three. These are just kind of general guidelines. So that is the extreme, and that is the extreme. So your dynamic center is going to float somewhere between those two markers throughout the entire game, depending on where you are, right? Move with her. Move with her. Okay. So that was a good one. That was a good one. You did what everybody does. You stopped. You stopped here, right? And I literally pulled her off the court. If she gets pulled off the court, you have to come all the way over to this marker to cover these two thirds by yourself until she can recover. Yeah. All right. So we'll start over here. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you did it again. You stopped. Yeah, that's good. But just don't. So that, that can't be a barrier in your mind. It is for everybody, and that's what I'm trying to break in your mind. That line does not exist. When your partner's dragged off the court, you're covering this two-thirds. Okay? All right, here we go. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Well, hold on. That's awesome. There is no such thing as poaching. No, you're playing a team game. You're playing a team game. You want one of your players. If a ball's in the center, you want the best player in the best position to take that ball. Yeah, well, and there are a lot of people who are like, don't take a ball on my side of the court. Yeah, if they want to play that way, they can play that way. But that's not how a team plays. Yeah. Yeah, and in Steve's case, it's probably an ADHD autism thing. He gets hyper focused, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll start here. Okay. Oh. oh, sorry, Charlotte. That's good. You guys are transitioning well. What 
what I'm trying to do is hit one wide over there, one wide over there, and often the middle just opens up like like a yawning chasm. But you guys are keeping it keeping it plugged, so that's good. Well done. All right, so let's talk about something else now. Forward, backward. You not only want to stay side by side, if one of you gets pushed back, the other one's going to need to go back with them. Right? Because what happens is teams will often pick on a player, push them back, push them back, push them back to open up the diagonal. And if you don't step back with your partner, like one step is okay. They're going to recover and they're going to move forward. But if they get pushed back two steps, now the diagonal is really starting to open up. So you need to be conscious of the depth of your partner as well as the width of your partner. So. Yes. Yeah. Always you need to know three things you're watching, right? You're watching the ball in its direction of travel, right? There's your partner and there's the lines, right? You got to pay attention to all of those, all three of those things all of the time. So. All right, so I'm going to try and move you guys, move you guys back. I might hit some longer shots, some deeper dinks to push you back. I'm going to try and push one partner back so the other one, so I can create separation between you, okay? All good yet. Good. You guys stay back. That's awesome. Okay, so let's talk about that. So we all know when we're playing on the half court that the player receiving the player receiving the ball diagonally takes it, right? We all know that. What happens where people get confused is when the sideline shifts to here, when the center line shifts to here. But the principle stays the same. So if I'm on this side of that center line hitting this way, you're gonna take it. Right? Even though it's on her side of the court. Right? You, you have to remember that this, this, this dynamic center line, the diagonal still holds. The diagonal rule, generally speaking, the player on the diagonal is going to take it, even when the side the center line shifts. So keep that in mind. Angle of incidence. You're more likely to get a good, crisp, powerful attack from a narrow angle of incidence than a wide angle of incidence, especially if you're reaching out into a wide angle. So now you're reaching into weakness, trying to hit a uh, uh, an angle like this, right? This is a what, oblique angle, an oblique angle. So that's why, all right? Got me that time. Good. Move, Charlotte. Good. We'll keep that one. It's good. You guys are covering so well that those are my only shots, right? Right? So you guys are covering really well. You're forcing me to go for those shots. And those are low percentage shots. Those are risky shots, right? Yeah, they, they do at the higher level. But don't forget, there's usually four players. Right? So. Exactly. Yeah. 
Good movement. Whoa! Okay, last thing I want to talk about is the cord tick. So, if a, if a ball ticks, it's usually going to drop straight over the net, right? Drop short. So one player is going to have to step in and hit a ball that's really close to the net. Most of the time in this situation, they will just lob it. So if you're on the side of the net that ticks, you have to go from this foot position to this foot position because one of you probably might have to move forward for a short dink. The other one might have to go back for a lob. So as soon as that ball ticks, people tend to stand there and just watch. As soon as it ticks, you need to shift a foot forward back because you don't know whether you're going to be going forward or going back. You're definitely not going to get a ball slammed at you because it's way too close to the net. So this position doesn't do you any good. So you gotta keep that in mind. It's gotta be a habit. One of the things you can work on is what I call a tick drill, where you rat, where you dink with your partner, and every time the ball ticks the net, you automatically separate your feet, All right? So we're gonna work on a tick drill now, okay? Good, well done. <laughs> Let me check the time. Okay, we have four minutes. Can't hit the net. Ah, it's terrible. Ah, it's good though. That's good. We'll work on that. That's a separate drill. But you can see how the other thing you have to think about with the tick drill is if you step forward into the kitchen to push off and then take the ball before both feet are planted, that's a fault. Right? So by choosing to drop one foot, it prevents you're already in the push off position. You don't have to worry about that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're not ready for it, if your feet are here, you're going to do this, which is what everybody does when they have to go back. Yeah. Yeah, you might have to. Yeah. Or, right? Or, right, you hit the shot, push, right? Just do a, sw a swing step, push, swing, shuffle. I can't hit the net card. Ah. Ah, we tried. All right, any questions? Okay. Awesome. Good. You guys are going to be playing, so you can grab a drink. I'll rotate everybody. 
on everybody. Last point, last point. All right, blink and drink and wash your hands. 